Hi guys, it's Kelly from Cards by Christine here with you on a Technique Thursday to share with you the Northern Lights Technique using the new Soft Pastels. So, let's check out the card. Um, there was a learning curve, so I'm happy to share with you how this was created and the things that I learned along the way using those pastels um, and make this beautiful card. So, let's set that off to the side and bring in our supplies. So um, obviously the highlight here is using these soft pastels, but then I'm also going to bring in the Mountain Air stamp set um, and actually utilize the tip that Chris just shared on Tuesday about flipping your stamps over and um, using the reversible stamps. So. These pastels are um, basically compressed chalk um, and they're in these sticks. And, you know, I, I used to be an art major. I went to school for graphic design and it has been a long time since I've played with these kind of things. So it kind of was interesting to dust off that type of skill set again. And honestly, they're really easy to use. Um, but maybe the first time you use them, you want to be open-minded that it may not be a beautiful work of art. You may have to experiment with them a little bit. This was not my first take at it. I did do a, a first round where I kind of learned and worked through some of the, you know, some of the learning moments. But I'm kind of just taking them and applying the chalk right to a piece of basic white in a rainbow fashion um, to get the northern lights. Obviously, if you're not doing northern lights with this, you can use it for basically anything. Um, and if you're doing a different type of design or output, um, you don't need to follow the rainbow technique um, to get the northern lights. But I'm just grabbing each of the colors and kind of blending them into each other, kind of to the edges. And then I will be coming in with a blending brush and um, some memento black. So that's why I'm kind of avoiding the edges here. Now, I'm going to go step away for a second and grab the Q-tips. So just a second. Okay, so then I took Q-tips. Um, or you could use cotton balls or anything of the like. Um, and blended them together. I'm just gonna kind of shake off or flick off the excess because it is a chalk. So, you know, just remember doing chalk with your kiddos. Um, it's powdery and you will kind of get some on your fingers if you're kind of in your workstation. So just keep that in mind. And as I'm using this Q-tip, I'm going to rotate it. You'll kind of see here I've got different colors on different portions of it. You know, you're gonna be dragging that color. So you want to kind of keep rolling your Q-tip as you go so that you don't bring too much of the red into the green and make it a real muddy mess. Um, but essentially you're just kind of pushing that color into the paper and blending them as you go. Um, now, again, you're loosening more of that, um, more of that chalk out and pushing more of it down. So you'll have some more to kind of flick off. Um, and to be honest with you, that's kind of how far I went for the first round. Um, and then I actually did put a second layer on. So I'll bring in, now I'm taking my memento on a blending brush and starting off, and bringing some of that, oh, sorry, one second. Um, bringing some of that black up to the beautiful colors. And now how my card is designed, we don't need to worry about the bottom because I'm going to be stamping my mountains down there. So you can just kind of use that area as well as a springboard to get your blending in. Now, again, like I said, this was definitely a learning curve for me. 
every time I do some of these techniques, I, I learn things myself. But um, I, after I was done with this, the Northern Lights portion of it was beautiful, but so bright, which didn't feel very realistic. So once I'm done adding the black around the edges, I actually went in and put a layer of black blended over the top. Um, in researching some about these chalk pastels, some people suggest to set the chalk using like a hairspray or a, a setting spray. That is definitely something you can try, especially if you're going to be doing these for like a swap card or making a bunch of them. However, uh, I feel as though it may be okay with the ink over the top, kind of maybe setting it into place. That's my assumption. I could be very wrong on that, but um, it does seem, you know, I, I did finish the card and I do think it seems like it's pretty well set. So as you're watching me blend this, you may notice that I've taken quite a bit of that chalk off and that is why I... So here's after one round. Um, and that is why I went in with a second layer and layered it in twice, which really helped to pop those colors out and get that look that I was going for. So I'm just gonna take one more layer of each of these colors on top and then I'm actually going to come in and blend one more time with the black. So um, and I think the box labels what each of these colors are so if you're using these um, and making a card where you want to maybe mat with a matching color uh, I'm sure the box says like I'm guessing you know, here I'm guessing is gorgeous grape and, and stuff like that. So Stampin' Up! does just a fantastic job of, of staying within color families so that everything <laughs> matches and um, just coordinates perfectly. So now I'm going to grab, I'm sorry, struggling to get that one back in. Okay, now I'm going to grab my Q-tip one last time, press it down into the paper again. And then, okay, huff that off so that it's out of my workstation. Grab my blending brush one more time. Really soften that edge between the black of the sky and the colors of my Northern Lights. And then I will probably finish off with one more layer on top. So that's how I achieved that Northern Lights look. Like I said, it was definitely a learning curve. Um, I was getting frustrated and I, that's when I tried to remind myself that this is the first time I'm trying a new product. Um, you know, I was inspired to do this and I wanted to I wanted it to be perfect right off the bat but that is unrealistic so I, I needed to kind of lend myself my own hand and walk myself oh sorry huh you just got a sneak peek of my hair um walk myself through oops making this card and I am happy with how it turned out so then I'm taking the mountain stamp from the Mountaineer stamp set and I'm reverse stamping it to get that mountain range on the kind of silhouette of the mountain range. So I want it to be a real dark shadow. So I'm making sure that I'm getting a good coverage of ink on here um, and stamping it about a third of the way up pressing real hard to get a good stamped image. Okay. Then because the mountain range and excuse me, mountain range ends, I'm going to just fill it in with a couple more stamped mountain ranges to get it nice and black. So 
let's stamp, stamp, stamp. Um, and then where I'm getting stamping on top of stamping, <laughs> um, it's a little darker and you'll kind of notice, you know, that it's multiple stamps. So I honestly just went back and put a couple more layers of black on it, just making it nice and dark. I also was intentional about the design of this card um, to put the ribbon right through there so that it didn't um, so much matter if it was perfectly evenly stamped. And then I just took the corner, kind of covered in some of the corners. So <laughs> there's no science to a lot of this. It's kind of just, hey, I need to make it black. Let's just fill it in. And then last but certainly not least, I grabbed the tree stamp and put a couple trees on there to really get that mountainous look. And then um, obviously most of you are familiar with um, how to put ribbon and, and matting and all that stuff. So that's where I'm going to end with you today. Um, we've got the sample card and what we just made together. Um, so what do you think of the pastels? Is it something you're going to try yourself? Um, it's, it's fun to try new things. Um, I love that Stampin' Up! is always coming out with new products um, for us to try and learn and grow with. Um, and now that you're looking at me again, you may see some special guests behind me and you maybe have heard some whispering as they patiently waited for me and my procrastinating self to um, record this video. So say hi to Chris's class. I think we have monthly cards tonight. Yep. Can you guys? Yep. Hi. Mm -hmm. So live from the hive with Chris. Hey. Um, what, a couple <laughs> minutes after class yep, started because yep. we I ran a little late. So thanks everybody. Sir, if you heard us whispering in the back there, we were trying to be very, very quiet, but um, Kelly came in right before we were going to do class, and this way she doesn't have to do this at midnight tonight when she should be sleeping. So, <laughs> so she probably looks a little bit more spry and fresh yes. than last week. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. All right, catch you later tonight um, when Chris comes at you live.